this is Roger, thanks for dropping by. Um, this is not a repotting video, honest. <laughs> well it is sort of I suppose, but this one's a bit different, so I think it's worth videoing on the grounds that I'm not going to do what I normally do. Now this is the um, Maxillara Arachniteflora. Get your mouth around that. Um, that basically I've recently got off of um, eBay and um, I'm going to do something a bit different with it. So first of all I'll get the plant out of the way and um, paraphernalia. PM, coffee replaced by wine and um, it's better to drink it rather than spill it because I don't think it'll do the orchids much good. Um, that's a nice Shiraz if you're interested. And yes, I have only just started. Um, right, paraphernalia. Us YouTubers who do this sort of thing, repotting and other, not how-tos, but how we do type videos, um, it's easy to assume that the people watching have watched your previous videos. That's not always the case. So referring back to what you did last time might not be a good idea because some people might not know what the hell you did last time. So paraphernalia, that's 3% hydrogen peroxide. That's for spraying roots and plants and killing anything that isn't the plant, basically. Um, I've got that in a nice um, atomizer, I think you call it, like glorified mister, but very, very fine. Um, I don't always use it, I use it as a needs must. This orchid doesn't look like it's been that well cared for. What it's potted in is not very good. I don't know what's living in it, so the roots will probably get a dose of that um, once I get all the muck off of them. So, hydrogen peroxide. Scissors, sharp, can't stand blunt scissors. They are soaking in a Jack Daniels glass, but they're not in Jack Daniels, I can assure you, because I wouldn't put my scissors in such wonderful stuff. Oh, cat's just gone out. Um, basically, they're soaking in um, the usual stuff. Um, rubbing alcohol does the job. But, very important, anything you're going to use to cut plants needs to be sterilised. For many and varied reasons, but most importantly, if by some rare and obscure chance you do happen to get a plant that does contain a virus, it will be spread by your cutting tools. Now in my book, viruses are rare, but if you get one, especially on new plants, yeah, and it's all very well quarantine a plant, you know, that may detect whether you've got snails in the media, might detect whether you've got some mealy bugs, or worse of all, the dreaded spider mites. Yes, quarantine will do that. Quarantine will not necessarily show a virus, because a virus can live in a plant for a long time with very few, if any, signs of its existence. And it only needs the plant to go downhill a little bit, and it'll kick in and suddenly your plant will start to deteriorate at a more dramatic rate. By then, you could have repotted it, snipped some roots off, and promptly transferred that onto other plants. That's important. Yeah? Sterilise your cutting tools. Make sure your pots are either brand new, or they've been well cleaned off and dried and, you know, are pure. I don't bother sterilising this stuff, I assume the manufacturer did that for me. One would hope. <laughs> anyway, potting media for this thing is a little unusual because it's a right old mix. It's got medium bark in it and fine bark and it's even got some chunky bits in it. And the plant itself is going in here. Now I don't use these very often and that's the reason. All the media falls out the bottom. But, we have a technique. This stuff was bought for my bonsai. It's a very strong plastic grill. And what you do with your bonsai, bonsai pots have very, very large drainage holes in, sometimes as much as an inch across. And bonsai media is very gritty, um, and basically it falls out the holes. 
So what you do is you cut this into little squares and you make a little wire hook that goes inside the drainage hole and that sits over the drainage holes. And what it's going to do today is sit over the bottom of that pot. Um, now I haven't actually done this for a long time so this might not work too well but we'll see what we can do. So I'm laying it on the top because I want some to come up the sides. I don't just want this on the bottom. I want to actually hold the media in place. So I'm sort of getting it even around there and then I'll um, cut it to size. With my scissors it cuts very easy. That easy. Yeah, I don't even have to squeeze the scissors, they're sharp. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is cut into the corners. Now, some people would cut diagonally. Um, I cut that way. That's just me, that's how I like to do it. And what I'm doing is I'm aiming to where I think the base will be. And then we'll turn that round because we've already done that bit. And then we'll do it from this side as well. Sort of like that. I can make adjustments if I get this slightly wrong. But it should be somewhere near it. And then the idea is we can just push that in and fold the sides up. Yeah? And make like a basket within a basket. Yay! That was a good fit, first go. Or near enough first go, but this stuff is incredibly stiff. It's um, very, very strong. But there you go. So we have like a little mesh grill inside the basket. So my media now won't fall out all the holes. But if the roots want to go through there, they can. There's plenty of room for roots to escape. Okay, so that's the general idea. That's what it's going in. You can go back in there for a minute or two. And the next game we play is... Um, getting the plant out of the pot when we find out just how much muck is actually in here. I don't like the look of what this potted in, but I do <laughs> potted in. Should I say placed in the pot and sold? That's not potted. Oh, that's got lecker beads in the bottom. That, that's got some, uh, some of those, or hydrochon, or it's got many names, but little expanded clay pebbly things. Um, as far as the plant is concerned, it's not really in much at all. That is like a solid, I mean solid mass of roots with no media in at all. There's a little bit of media around the top. I'm not sure. Those roots are good enough to leave on. They're not dead. And is there anything in there? There's a little bit of sphagnum in there that I will wash out. But basically... That's not a bad root ball. I mean, this is solid, but some of that in there is actually moss. So I will run under the tap, as I usually do. Yeah, you can see the moss coming out now. I want the moss out, because it's going in an open basket, and moss, to that extent, defeats the object. So I'll give it a rinse and give it a clean up, and I'll be back. Okay, I've given this a bit of a clean up um, that had a massive amount of moss in it and the person who sold this tried to hide a little bit of a cheat. I need to be clever in that. Basically, I can show you what's been going on. If you look at this side of the plant, it's got a curve to it and quite a lot of new roots coming out here. If you look at this side of the plant, it's concave and there aren't so many new roots. Now this was part of a plant that probably looked about like that. Yeah? And somebody's probably cut it into three or four and in this particular case plonked it in a pot with some rubbish basically to make it look like that's where it lived, when in fact it didn't. It's only been in there a very short space of time. It did have a lot of moss in the base. I can't get it all out without manking the roots too much. And, um, you know, some of these roots have actually been damaged actually washing it off. But it's still got plenty. 
not particularly worried about the root system on this plant um, and it has got plenty of new growths. So putting that to one side Right, as far as now I've seen the root system and seen that it's relatively fine, I'm glad I actually put some um, fine bark in with the uh, bigger pieces. Now what I've done is I've put some chunky bark in the base of that. That's, that's drainage basically. I don't need to do that, but I want to plant this plant high in here. I want it up in this area, not down in there on the ground so that it will spread out over the basket because although I don't mind the look of wooden baskets I love it when the plants start coming over the edge and the roots go down the sides of the baskets and it sort of envelops the basket I think that's the right word anyway um, the fact that that's got a fine root system it is actually going to get some moss mixed in so I always squeeze that out first and I um, tear it up into uh, relatively small pieces that it just just because it mixes in well I, I, the moss isn't in there to keep this moist it's in there to help it stay moist if I choose to do so now in the summer when things dry out especially in open baskets the moss will help in the winter when I perhaps don't want it quite so wet there's not enough in there to hold that much moisture it's just to help when I want it to stay moist a little bit longer. Okay, as far as potting is concerned, I probably won't be able to show you all of this, but some in the bottom, as always. Sit the pot in, no, plant in, come on brain, work. And it's going to sit quite nicely in there. And then it's just a matter of um, putting some media around. I'm not too worried about wiggling this all in amongst those roots because they're sitting on media, they're quite short, and um, they'll get straight in there. So unlike some of the chunkier roots where you have to spend ages wiggling your fingers, I won't have to do quite so much of that in this particular case. Now I've done this diagonal because it's actually longer than it is deep, if you see what I mean. It's not a round plant, it's not a square plant, it's a more like an oblong. So I've done it corner to corner rather than uh, edge to edge. I know what I mean, even if you don't. Um, and then it's, it's just a matter of, um, you know, compacting it in. It's not a big deal. It doesn't have to be packed in tight. Um, it just has to be in there so that it doesn't wobble. Because if you've got a basket like that, it's virtually impossible to put a stake in there. It's only that deep, for goodness sake. You put a stake in there, it just will wobble around the same as the plant will, so it would achieve no purpose. But if you do have trouble getting a plant to be stable in a shallow basket like this, quite honestly, the easiest way I've found to do it is, I mean, this has got um, nuts on there um, to attach. What I'll, I will do is I put a wire on each corner up over the top, twist them together and make a hook. And I can hang that where I like then. That's, that will be what happens. And then these bolts do up tight to hold the wires in place. But what you could do is put some um, wire onto those corner posts and just gently put a loop sort of around there like that of reasonably stiff wire to just hold it in place like that, attached to the corners. Um, I won't need to. This, this is going to sit there quite nicely without any help at all. And it won't wobble about much. It's going to root into there pretty damn quick, I think. That's gone in there quite nicely. Um, media up to the base of the pseudo bulbs on a plant like this. Yeah? Not right up halfway up the pseudo bulbs, just up to the base. The idea being any new roots that come out from any of the new growths have got something to get into but the media doesn't stay wet halfway up the bulb and promptly rot it. So that's probably about it. Okay, I'll leave it at that. I'm not going to muck about showing attaching wires. We're all intelligent people. I'm sure you can work out how to attach a wire to the corner of the basket and hang it up. So that's that one done. That will now get a very good water and um, 
you know, what that washes any dust off, make sure the roots have got some moisture around them. It wasn't dry in its pot, so I'm not particularly worried about that. And then that will get put somewhere, not in bright light yet. Uh, Maxillaria is like, similar light to Oncidiums in the main. If, if they look like this, if they look like Oncidiums, then they like the same sort of light as Oncidiums. The exception is the coconut one, the tenuifolia, which has a totally different growth pattern and actually can take quite a lot of light. And if you want a good set of blooms, it needs that light. These are more like Oncidiums, so this doesn't need intense light. It needs a, a medium to bright. It's not going to get any direct sun on it. Not where I'm going to put it anyway. But in the interim, just to let those roots settle in and start to grow again and get attached in their new media, it'll go in a lower light level for a while. Um, I won't say how long it'll probably be till I see some little white bits coming out the sides. So I won't put it in high light straight away. Um, and um, that's it really. Uh, a sort of not how to repotting video because as you all know I don't do how to videos. I just show you what I do. Okay I just did that one and won't be doing many more repotting videos because they're all the same. You know take pot out, clean roots, put media in, put pot in, put media in, press down, repotting video. But this one was a bit different because of the type of basket. And these open slatted baskets are great. They do get a lot of air around and they do allow the plants to come out over the side. They love attaching to wood. But with a base like that, any media that I put in there would have come straight out the bottom. So I just thought I'd show that um, mechanism of actually using this stuff. Um, I don't know whether you can get it sold as anything else, but I've only ever seen this sold in the bonsai world. Um, and the fact that the word bonsai, like the word orchid on the packaging, normally increases the price. But it works. It's good, strong stuff, totally not rottable. That can live forever. That will li live longer than that wood and the plant and the media. So it's good stuff. So as this was a bit unusual, I just thought I'd video that. Okay, right. Cheers. See you again next time. Mm -hmm.